both the middle part and the posterior part of the gut undergo a significant rotation. Let's start with the mid-gut. So here would be the stomach and the upper part of the duodenum with the uh, pancreat with the liver butt and ventral pancreatic butt and dorsal pancreatic butts described elsewhere and this will be the in the uh, umbilical intestinal loop with the cranial limb with the omphaloenteric or vitellin duct and the remnants of the yolk vesicle and then the lower limb And this will be the uh, abdominal wall on the, on the sagittal section. Here will be the the umbilicus, right? And the superior mesenteric artery as the axis of this uh, the vascular axis as of this um, intestinal loop and the dorsal mesenteries so this is the stomach uh, the liver and pancreatic butts and uh, the duodenum then this is the umbilical intestinal loop of the midgut This is the yolk vesicle, which will be completely resorbed later on. The vitellin duct, or omphaloenteric And this is the abdominal wall. So the presence of the um, umbilical intestinal loop inside the umbilicus, uh, outside the, the, the body, is called uh, the umbilical horniation. And it's perfectly normal to have it between the 6th, 8th or 10th, 10th week. But by the end of the 10th week, it should be retracted back into the abdominal cavity. Should it be trapped outside, the umbilicus will be closing and uh, the, the loops would remain outside. That would be already in pathology. But in this uh, time, it's, it, it, it's normal, it's physiological. Uh, this is the aorta and the superior mesenteric artery. Uh, this is the dorsal mesentery here. Now this superior mesenteric artery becomes an axis of the rotation of that uh, loop where, where the, the posterior limb goes upwards or the, the, the aporal limb goes upwards and the more cranial the oral limb goes downwards so it makes this rotation with the mesenteric artery as the axis So what is the outcome of this rotation? 
got the liver butt and the ventral pancreatic and dorsal pancreatic butts and so on. And after that, uh, the originally lower part of the limb goes upwards. And the formerly cranial part is downwards now. And here there will be the abdominal wall. So here is the future column, the cecum, and the small intestine. Right? Now the there will be the extensive rotation of the hind gut and so the mainly the, the large intestine with the with the colon transversum and, and so on. So if we start here with the cecum, the future appendix, and the left colic flexure here will be the small intestine where the intestinal loops and the duodenum here. Then the cecum will become the leading part that will move to the right. It will be the right side and here will be the left side in all the schemes. And it will go to the right side and then form the right colic flexure and going downwards. So this is the future ileum, the future jejunum, and the duodenum. And this is the vitellin duct, at least what remains of it. And in the next stage, uh, we will see that the cecum has moved and formed the right colic flexure. Here is the appendix, the ilocecal junction, the transverse colon, left colic flexure, and the rest of the large intestine. And here the extensively growing loops of the small intestine still with the superior mesenteric artery as the axis of the rotation and the these loops. Uh, so this will be the cecum. And it's actually descending into the right iliac fossa. this direction. This will be a superior mesenteric artery and the mesenteries.
finally when the seeker will reach the right iliac fossa so will the appendix with the variability of its positions here will be the iliac sequel junction and we got the transverse colon the transverse colon the ascending uh, sorry the descending colon a sigmoid and the rectum and here this small intestine with its many loops So we got the right colic flexure, left colic flexure, the transverse colon, the ascending colon, which is named after the direction of the passage of the chymus and the, but actually we know it descended anatomically yeah but it's called ascending because the chymus goes this way and this will be the descending colon and the sigmoid colon and the rectum part of the colon. Here is the appendix and here is the ilum and so on. So f completely uh, the the hind gut rotated like 270 degrees counterclockwise and uh, one of the reasons why do we mention that it's the variability of the positions of the appendix which is a result of this, this descending uh, uh, the census of the, of, the, of the cecum into the right filiac fossa and once the the colon will reach its position the 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 mesocolon their dorsal mesenteries will grow uh, together with the posterior body wall in the extent of the ascending and descending colon while the mesenteries of the transverse colon will become loose and allow for some uh, further movements of the transverse colon. Now what happens if this uh, vitellin duct does not uh, disappear completely? So, persisting vitellin duct uh, there are various conditions. One would be like this, with the uh, with the umbilical region and the ligament, a vitellin ligament, connecting the persisting part of the vitellin duct, which would be found on the ilum, like two to th three feet from the ilocecal junction. So if this is the ilum, this will be the abdominal wall, umbilicus, then this will be the vitellin ligament, and this will be the so-called Meckles diverticulum on the ilum. It's the persisting vitellin duct, usually 40 to 60 centimeters from the ileocecal junction. It might resemble appendix, but it's not on the cecum, it's on the ilum. There could be a cyst, so uh, 
that could be cavity filled with fluid or chymos alternatively so cyst from the macros diverticulum and the most severe condition would be a completely persisting connection between the umbilicus and the vitellin duct so there will be an uh, umbilical fistula connecting the ileum with the umbilicus so the chymos will come out here from the ileum outside the body wall so this can happen when the vitellin duct does not completely uh, persist uh, sorry it, it's not completely resorbed <coughs> 